Chapter 3 Beleaguered Bovine Now, a grim statistic about Bishop's Point is, it has the highest rate of deaths from being sat on by a cow in the world. It is ridiculous how many bovine-related fatalities it has had. The farmers in Bishop's Point don't even keep cows. They're too dangerous. All the cows there are wild and feral cows. This makes them even more deadly. There's something about the water in Bishop's Point or in the grass that just makes cows vicious. You take your life into your own hands going into the moors without adequate protection from the packs of wild cows that prowl the moors, looking for their next victims. Farmers have even reported the cows taking chickens and sheep. Maybe they eat them, or maybe they just keep them as slaves. The police are not sure. I say this because Father O'Reilly's Fiat 500 has just been flanked by two rows of feral cows. Father O'Malley shouts, Father! Wild cows all around us! I see them, Father! Floor it, Father! Vroom. The Fiat 500 gets up to 15 miles an hour now, but one of the barbarian cows headbutts the passenger window, smashing it. Father O'Malley screams, Ah, it's got me, Father! Its double jaws have locked down in my ear! The cow has a tight grip with its fat teeth on Father O'Malley's ear. Father O'Reilly has no choice but to slow down to five miles an hour, or it will rip Father O'Malley's ear off. Father O'Reilly begins to slap the beast with a glove he keeps in his glove box. He has never needed this glove before, but he knew he had to put one in the box. That was four gloves. Get off him, you foul beasts! Be gone with you! Don't let it lock its jaws, father! Oh, its jaws are locked, father! I am in the death throes, father! Get it of it, father! Aim for its fat, stupid eyes! Oh, I can feel its satanic tongue licking my lobe! As this battle unfolds, the other wild cows have set upon the car. One is ripping off the windscreen wipers with its ferocious teeth. Another rains down blow after blow onto the roof with its fat clubbing head, denting the roof, crushing it inwards on top of the priest. Father O'Reilly pokes the attacking cow in the eye with his finger. The cow releases its death lock on Father O'Malley as its right eye spins in a circle and it lets out a horrific honk. Honk. Father O'Malley grabs Father O'Reilly's shoulder. Go! Drive, Father! Give her everything she's got! Father O'Reilly stamps on the gas. The car rockets up to 20 miles an hour with the pursuing bovine fading behind it. It's nearly impossible for Father O'Reilly to see oncoming obstacles at this breakneck speed. He swerves around clumps of grass that could easily overturn the car at this reckless velocity. Father O'Malley looks behind them. He can see the imps closing in on the bovine. The wild cows turn to face the oncoming imps from hell, with mean looks on their cowy faces. The car goes over a small hill, so the cows and imps disappear from Father O'Malley's view. Over the horizon of the hill, Father O'Malley witnesses a mass of blood fly up into the air, then back down again, as if someone just put an elephant through a wood chipper. Jesus! Drive faster, Father! There's biblical bludgeoning in hot pursuit! 
The goblins just shredded through that pack of wild cows, Father. They must be very sharp. Father O'Reilly delegates instructions. Bring Officer McCauley, Father. Tell him to get everyone to St. Oscar's. It's not safe in the village. Tell him it's even worse than the badgers with distemper. Father O'Malley gets out his phone. Right so, Father. That was a terrible business with the badgers, so it was. Mary McTavish is laying out dinner for her three children when there's a knock at the door. She opens the door. It's Officer McCauley. <clears throat> Good evening, Mary. Good evening, Officer McCauley. Is everything okay? Well, not really, Mary, no. We need to go to St. Oscar's right now. The badgers are back. Oh, right so, officer. Come, children, we have to go now. The devil bears have come back. Mary's children start crying in terror as they scramble for the door. The oldest, Seamus, cries at his mother. You won't let the devil bears get us, will you, ma? Mary scrambles them out the door. Oh, shame us. I will be running so far ahead of you, I won't even be able to hear your screams as they tear off your face. Seamus flicks his wrists as his crying intensifies. Mary and her children run for the church. Mary running faster than the three kids, desperately trying to keep up. Officer McCauley alerts the rest of the village to the oncoming storm, and they all seek refuge in St. Oscar's. Father O'Reilly's Fiat 500 pulls up outside the church. Jed and Ron's Land Rovers are already there. Father O'Reilly asks Jed as they enter the church, How did you get here so quickly, Jed? We did not, Father. Your car is just rubbish. You would probably have gotten here quicker walking, Father. The rest of the village are making themselves as comfy as possible on the hard oak benches. Father O'Malley asks Jed, Well, where is the book, Jed? Let's get this unpleasantness over with. Jed looks at Father O'Malley with a blank expression. Uh, sure, I have no idea, Father. Oh, did you not bring it with you, Jed? Was I supposed to, Father? Uh, did you not hear me say, Jed? The bishop says to get to holy ground and read from the book to close the goblin pit. Aye, Father. Uh, how do you think we can do that without the book, Jed? Jed goes quiet for a second. Did he mean the same book we used to open it, Father? Father O'Malley looks a bit exasperated. Yes, Jed. We are not going to close it with a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey, now are we? Well, this is a revelation, Father. One of us really should have brought that book with us. Father O'Reilly interjects. You were literally holding it when we said to go to higher ground with it, Jed. Jed gives a heavy sigh. Oh, that just makes the irony even worse. Doesn't it, Father? Officer McCauley walks to the windows. The church is now surrounded with gnarly, satanic-horned imps, hellhounds and beasts with glowing eyes and wings. Those badgers have got a lot bigger this year, fathers. <laughs>